There are several ways of determining the electrical heart axis on an ECG. We will practice two of them in this video. The first method is a bit more complicated and it uses the Eindhoven's triangle, which is included in a circle. You can find more about Eindhoven's triangle in the video about ECG leads on this channel. The edges of the triangle are the three bipolar limb leads D1, D2 and D3. The superior half of the circle contains negative values ranging from minus 180 degrees to 0 degrees and the inferior half contains positive values ranging from 0 degrees to plus 180 degrees. We will use leads D1 and D2 and we measure the amplitude of QRS complex in these leads. We choose a QRS complex in lead 1 and determine the amplitude of each wave. What is above the isoelectric line is a positive value and what is under the isoelectric line is a negative value. We'll choose this QRS complex. The amplitude of Q wave is 1 mm and because it is under the isoelectric line, Q equals minus 1. The amplitude of R wave is 8 mm and because it is above the isoelectric line, R equals plus 8. The amplitude of S wave is 1 mm and because it is under the isoelectric line, S equals minus 1. We sum the three values so the QRS complex in lead 1 is plus 6. We make the exact same thing in lead 2. Q equals minus 1, R equals plus 13, and S equals minus 2, so QRS complex in lead 2 is plus 10. In Eindhoven's triangle, we represent on each chosen lead a vector that equals the amplitude of QRS complex. We start in the middle of the lead and take into account the sign, plus or minus. We draw a perpendicular line from each point of the vector. The two perpendiculars that pass through the origin of the vector meet in point O and the other two perpendiculars meet in point A. By uniting points O and A, we get the vector of the electrical axis of the heart. By measuring the angle formed by the axis that divides the circle in superior and inferior half and by OA vector, we obtain the value of the electrical heart axis, in our case plus 45 degrees, so normal heart axis. The second method is a quicker method and it is called the quadrant method. We will look at lead 1 and lead AVF and determine whether the QRS complex in each lead is positive or negative, so we don't have to know the exact value of the QRS complex. If QRS complex is positive in both 1 and AVF leads, it means the axis is somewhere between 0 and plus 90 degrees, so it is normal. If QRS complex is positive in lead 1 and negative in lead AVF, it means the axis is somewhere between 0 and minus 90 degrees. In this case, we must also look at the QRS complex in lead 2. If it is positive, it means the axis is normal, and if it is negative, it means that left axis deviation exists. If QRS complex is negative in lead 1, and positive in lead AVF, it means the axis is somewhere between plus 90 and plus 180 degrees, so right axis deviation exists. If QRS complex is negative in both 1 and AVF leads, it means the axis is somewhere between minus 90 and minus 180 degrees, so extreme right axis deviation exists. On this ECG, the QRS complex is positive in both 1 and AVF leads. It means the axis is somewhere between 0 and plus 90 degrees, so it is normal.